One of the first lessons a rookie pitcher must learn is how to stand on the mound. For the way he balances himself determines the power he gets behind the ball and the control he has over the pitch. Red Ruffy, one of the all-time pitching greats, watches Murph Mazursky work on his follow-through. He must master this before he can hope to become a 20-game winner. One of the outstanding rookies in our camp this year is young Herb Score, a left-hander who has tremendous speed. To help him with his control, Coach Mel Harder, who pitched 19 seasons for the Indians, tells Score to keep his head level and his eyes squarely on the plate. By long hours of practice, Score can lose the wildness that most fireball pitchers have at the start. On any baseball team, the catcher is a key man, a real playmaker. One of the game's finest catchers, Bertie Tebbets, shown here wearing a cream to protect his lips and nose from sunburn, stresses the importance of that position to our young catchers. Tebbets shows the rookies how to make one of the catcher's most difficult plays, a high pop foul in the sun. Making the catch can mean an important out in a decisive game during the regular playing season. That fellow was too stiff on his slide. He'll never steal a base that way. Despite his tremendous size, Jim Lemon makes a lo much looser slide and would have more of a chance to elude the tag. Learning to slide can mean extra bases to a ball team and protection to the player against injuries, which will keep him out of action. To improve its hitting, every team must spend long hours in the batting cage. Mike McNally, our farm director, keeps an eye on Lemon. He is working here to perfect his timing, which is especially important to a power hitter like Jim. This kind of a slugger has to get out in front with that bat to make the most of his power. He just can't meet the ball as it goes across the plate. Lemon's fine follow through permits him to use all his tremendous driving power. How does he look to you? Looks great, Hank. He's a big boy and he's got a lot of power and he hits that ball sharp all the time. A major leaguer has to know what he's going to do in any situation in a ball game. Through constant drilling, this knowledge becomes reflex action. Here rookies pay close attention while Hank Greenberg analyzes a cutoff play. There it goes, there it goes. Watch the runners. The man on first goes halfway. Man on third tags up. All right, hold up. All right. The third baseman was the cutoff man. He lined up with the throw to the plate. The shortstop moved to third base. Cover that base. The second baseman moved to second base. That base was covered. The first baseman stayed on first. And the runner on first advanced halfway in case the outfielder dropped the ball so that he could make second safely. The pitcher covered up home plate and was back of the catcher in case of an overthrow at the plate. The man on third, as soon as the ball was hit, he went back to the bag and tagged up, waited for the ball to be caught, and then he came home. Okay. At the end of the training day, the boys are ready for a good meal. A balanced diet is an essential part of the build-up for men who are working their way into the big league. The training day has been wearing, and lunch at noon was light. So dinner in the cafeteria at the end of the day is a full meal. The rookies are inspired by pictures of Indians who have made baseball history. Cy Young, the pitcher who won 511 games. The great Tris Speaker at left and second baseman Napoleon LaJoy, who three times led the league in batting. Mail from home is important to Jim, whose wife is expecting a baby. 
Letters home are filled with the rookie's hopes. Outfielder Mike Lutz usually writes his wife every night, no matter how tired he is. Each day starts out with exercises, familiar to all the ex-service men. At rookie camp, the big moments come with the squad games, which draw fans who like their baseball at any time of the year. Every spring, Jim Lemon usually gets off to a slow start. Fred Merkel, now a fan, forgot to touch second in the bonehead play of 1908. Lemon connects, but he only got a small piece of it and he's out at first. This was just a practice game. There are more important ones ahead. The first stage of spring training ends in Daytona Beach after 10 days. Jim Lemon and the other rookies who have made it this far leave along with a few of the regulars who have helped them through the paces here for the Indian camp at Tucson, Arizona. At Tucson, the pressure is really on. Cleveland sports writers like Frank Gibbons want Greenberg's word that the Indians won't falter in the stretch of the pennant race as they did last year. Physical lines, uh, Luke Easter looks a lot better too. I guess his knee is, is uh, down for good. I mean, no more balloons there in the knee for him. Well, if uh, Luke can play every day without uh, limping uh, too badly, why, uh, there's no telling what kind of a year he's apt to have. Well, they say he was the best hitter on one leg. Uh, he should be really something on two. Well, that's <laughs> what he told me when he was signing his contract. <laughs> Well, we have a good chance of winning, Frank. I think we're going to be stronger. We're, we have more depth in the pitching staff and certainly a greater potential in the outfield. That's true. Uh, I think we have 12 outfielders working out. You ought to be able to find a good uh, set of them out of those. Uh, you've got that Jim Lemon. How does Jim Lemon look to you? He looks awfully good. And, uh, he can hit the ball a long way. Well, we hope that he can do it often. Well, there will be a lot of competition for those jobs, and that's what makes good ball players. So... Uh, a little bit hungry for that for that regular job, eh? Well, I believe that uh, we're a much stronger team, and uh, things look good for 53. The story's getting better all the time, you know. At Tucson's municipal ballpark, the chips are down for all the players, regulars as well as rookies. Here, the whole squad works out together for the first time. The rookies get into a pepper game with Bob Feller, still a star and veteran Lou Brissy. Tucson's future ball players get a close-up look at Cleveland's 20-game winning pitchers. Bob Lemon, worth $45,000 a year. Mike Garcia, who makes $30,000. An early win, paid a reported $37,000. Bob Feller still has a few winning games left in that arm. Behind the plate, the Indians have Jim Hegan, who has been on four all-star teams. And Joe Tipton, a shrewd handler of pitchers. At first base, Luke Easter, who was bothered by a trick knee last season, is back in form. At second base, the Indians are counting on Bob Avila, who played that position last season. And for insurance, they have Doug Hansen, a rookie who looks promising at Tucson. The regular shortstop will be either Ray Boone, who was handicapped in 1952 by illness, or George Strickland, who took over for Boone late in the season. The third base spot is sewed up by Al Rosen, who led the league in runs batted in. In the outfield, center fielder Larry Doby home run champion of the American League last year, is sure of his job. Harry Simpson is a strong candidate for one of the other spots, as is Dale Mitchell, one of the league's leading hitters. Wally Westlake is also trying for a regular job, along with Bob Kennedy, back after service with the Marines, and rookie Mike Lutz. To break into the outfield against this kind of competition, Jim Lemon can use all the instruction he can get from his coaches and from general manager Hank Greenberg. You'll find uh, that you'll cover a lot more ground that way and you'll have a little more spring than you will if you take a short stride and run straight up and down. 
The Iron Mike feeds pitches to Lemon through long hours of practice under the close inspection of coaches like Bill Lobey at left and Red Crest. This kind of training improves Jim's form and gives him a long session at the bat. On the diamond, the rookie hitter faces the big time, Bob Feller. And Ted Wilkes. Heavy hitting Dale Mitchell looks sharp again this year. Luke Easter will be a home run slugger again if he can keep his bad knee in shape. 